I did uh, just to share. I've done like a a, a blog of uh, from uh, oh everything that's uh, you know, happening. Every every city we've been to. This one is from London, and then I did one in Belgium. Oh wow! And then I did one in Hamburg, and you know oh, every night yeah. I've been doing them right along yeah. the way. Oh, and, I love uh, that. I got a you know. A, couple hundred people maybe five you know maybe I don't care it's hard to tell because a lot of people read it and then sometimes they only say like 80 likes or 120 likes but then I realize a whole bunch of people don't bother to push like exactly they read it and they don't they you read know, it they may love it they may talk right. about and with their just, friends just, it's just you know they're just not in that habit of you know yeah. uh, pulling the trigger on that thing exactly you know, of course, and then a lot of people uh, I'll, I'll say I, you know I'll just find out oh I've been watching all your pictures I go you know, I seem to know the 80 names, you yes. know, but it ends up being more. But it's it's a kind of fun, fulfilling thing to do. Uh, yes. And I try to, you know, I try to capture a bit of everything. A lot of times I capture the, what's going on politically in the country. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll talk about Bulgaria, what's going on there, yeah. how gay day gets attacked by fascists, you know, how mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's a heavy duty thing. Yes. Other times it, it was about some of the bands last yeah. night, uh, you know, the feel, the vibration, what I think of the festival itself, yeah. how many times I played there, how it's changed. And, you know, and, um, and other times it's, um, Whatever, whatever I feel like, you know, yeah. or I'll, I meet one person and they tell me their story of this yeah. and that, and and I'll highlight their yeah, situation. Yeah, somebody that made an then impact. They, right, and they sing in this band and this mm -hmm. picture, you know, and so you know, I try to shuffle it around, mm -hmm. make it historical, political, band, gig, and just human being, you know, oriented. The human interaction. Yeah, I've been doing it for about two years. I got this is my second European tour doing it and um, actually it's my third European tour I did it in Asia last year I do it in the US a little less because it's a little less interesting because my readership is basically Americans yeah. Yeah. and they oh, know home. the US you know yeah. so they're interested what what's going on in yeah. in uh, Leeds England yeah. say yeah. and uh, and you know so that's how that works yeah. but anyway hi hello hello um, and it is a small festival that we're at today, but it's a very intense festival. Have you, you've only been here a short time. I, I just saw you I, outside. I have not picked up on the intensity. I know there's a great band like Radis uh, that just played over there. Yeah. And uh, so there's some names to it. Yeah. And maybe I haven't seen it all. I kind of mm -hmm. got here and we just spent two days at uh, Rebellion. Yes. And um, so... Um, so I was just kind of like taking inventory, making mm -hmm. sure my stuff is packed right. And yeah. I've been typing up, like I mentioned to you. Uh, yeah. uh, I, uh, I do a blog with mm -hmm. Facebook under Dave Dichter. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, just to tell you what I'm seeing, what, I, what I'm on tour. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I haven't been around. What makes it that way, seem that way to you, intense? It's the passion of the people that are here compared okay. to something like Rebellion where you get people of all flavors of punk. Here they are much more intensely into the music and wanting to be here for the music more uh -huh. so than the socializing and the, the party atmosphere that you uh -huh. get with Rebellion. Okay, um, I'll, I'll go with that. And yeah. you, 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 <laughs> you live here and you, you know, but I know this is pretty much a passion for the music you know yeah. there as well oh but definitely there are definitely 
you know, there's, you know, old codgers. Uh, you know, I'm not there yet, you know. Uh, but anyway. Inching uh, our way over. And, you know, there's the socialization and getting to see people I haven't seen in 10, 20, 30 exactly. years. Exactly. They met in Scotland 15 years ago. That is an intense kind of feeling oh, where yeah. this does have a feeling of a much more local feel. Yes. You know, everyone seems to be within 30, 50 miles of here, and they mm. kind of younger, and they know each other. But yeah, younger. I haven't felt that intensity yet. But some of the young people I met were just re really sweet, and I yeah. took pictures of them, actually. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so I've had, uh, you know, though I've only been here about an hour yeah. or so, uh, I've had nice interactions. That's a good thing. Um, and you've really had kind of a very diverse history because you were one of the first people to stand up and say look sexuality is nothing you know and and how do you think that all these years later the perception of people whether they are gay straight asexual bisexual transgender how do you think that's progressed in this scene in the punk scene oh you know like you say incredibly when i was in this scene well, I, you know, I was in the scene, I was a little older than the people that were in the American hardcore revolution that I can speak yeah. to uh, with, you know, living through it. And that, that, that came about 81, 80, 80, 81, 82. I was kind of into the music and into, you know, mm -hmm. starting bands in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. And that whole scene was different. It was much more like the New York Dolls yeah. meets the Ramones meets, the music was slower, it was more of a artier, popper, popper, poppy. Poppier. Uh, and it was, you know, it was punk, it was, it was punk rock and it was wearing, having orange hair and wearing a green coat and, you know, and, and going for it. And uh, Johnny Lydon, you know, yeah. you know, but, you know, from, from Talking Heads, it was the new wave, Elvis Costello, Patti Smith, mm. Iggy Pop, the Clash, and I saw all those bands, and you know that was a different. And then American hardcore, and I'm not sure if the same is true of British hardcore, but it came out of much younger kids yeah. who kind of saw punk rock going on, knew something was wrong with the culture, started to rebel. But a lot of them didn't have a firm idea of, hey, I'm rebelling because sexually I don't fit into this culture, and you know, so I'm gonna let my 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 free my freak flag fly yeah. and a lot of them just were blah, they were just knew something was wrong or they just knew something was becoming unhinged in american culture yeah. because after the hippie thing things kind of like went back and reagan got re-elected oh, yeah. and there was this really kind of return to you know they really it was a backlash against the you know black liberation lesbian liberation mm -hmm. gay liberation yeah. All this different liberation going on, and then finally, very similarly to like Donald Trump, people that voted for him are tired of all that liberation, and they're tired of it. And and you know, a lot of times they're tired of their jobs getting taken by people from somewhere else, yeah. and they're tired of you know the, the, you know some of the things they're tired about are very are true. You know, yeah. uh, you know, the, in the Brexit, I you know, considering what's going on here. Mm. I understand there, there are some people that feel like, you know, there's all these people from other places working and they're, they're accepting jobs, you know, for $10, $12 an hour. And I can't support a family on $10, $12 an hour. Exactly. You know, it's a similar type thing. And all the, uh, the uh, Mexican population coming across the border and wherever they're coming from, uh, that's just a more obvious one. You feel like they're lowering the job. There's people working construction jobs with hammers up in the, you know, ten, two stories up and blah, blah, blah. They're making ten, eleven, twelve dollars an hour. That's I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get up there for twelve dollars. Now I fall down, I'll be paralyzed and I'll be sitting here, you know, uh, feeling awful with no way to support myself or my family. And, you know, so the system is very cleverly pinched in both ways. You know, they're pitting, you know, people, lower classes against each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to the point where they're saying, England says, we don't want to be part of the Brexit. We want to be separate. We want to pick big wall around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And Britain for the Britons, you know. And, uh, and, and, and 
that's that's a view, you know, and 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 people can feel like they're they're not they're losing control of their lives. They're losing control of the ability for themselves to earn a living, and that and that plays into the whole fear and dynamic of the Donald Trump thing as well. Uh, a lot of it's old people who want to go back in the past. They want to go, you know, to the 50s where life just seemed kind of, everyone knew their place and the golden know, era. there was a greater place for white males. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it was dominated by that and, and, one group. You know, and they're longing back for a position where there wasn't so much women's lib and there wasn't so much, and there wasn't so much, you know, what they see, what, what they see is wrong. Yeah. And, um, I don't know, I forget where the question was going, but, you know, I see it, you know, and I'm here and I'm, you know, uh, I'm in both countries, you know, we were quite shocked when Trump won. Uh, not, not, you could almost feel it in this weird little thing, you know. <laughs> Make sure you 